Okay, in this video, we're going to show you how a hermetic compressor works. Now, probably most people don't know what the inside of a hermetic compressor looks like because it's a sealed unit. And a number of years ago, maybe 30 plus years ago, I actually had a machine that would cut this weld off here. It sat on a rotisserie with a blade and just cut the top right off and you could get inside the compressor, repair it, and then weld it back together. But the time involved in doing that just wasn't worth it because compressors were not that expensive. In this day and age, with the price of things going up, it may become popular again. But for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the top of this dome off here. And I'm going to show you what the inside of this compressor looks like and try to explain to you how it works. Give you a better idea, maybe help you in your diagnostics. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is we'll cut it open. Okay. Here is what the inside of a hermetic compressor looks like. Remove the dome. This is where the suction line was attached, right here. You can see that. This is the discharge line, which is connected to the cylinder head. This is a process port, which is also connected to the dome itself. Now this is um, classified as a low side dome and, and what I mean by that is that it's the vapor from the low side of the system coming back from the evaporator is drawn into this chamber through the suction line. So we're going to pull this out like so. Okay, this is the reservoir for the oil. You can see some oil. I drained most of the oil out of there. And this is an electric motor, basically an electric motor. It turns, and when it turns, it has an eccentric shaft on it, so that pushes that piston up and down, which creates the vacuum and the pressure. And also here you can see that there's a little paddle on this eccentric tube so that it as it rotates it picks up the oil in the reservoir and throws it up into this cylinder here to lubricate the connecting rod and the piston. Just similar, very similar to an automotive engine. Okay, so that's how that works. Now, <clears throat> this little gizmo here is a chamber where the pressure inside the dome, or I should say the vapor inside the dome, is sucked in through that hole, goes through this chamber here, and there's two holes in here and attached to that hole right there via this little triangle here that goes on like that and that is where when the piston goes down there's a reed valve in here I'll show you what that looks like as the piston goes down the reed valve opens and sucks the vapor through this chamber from inside the dome and on the upstroke compresses the vapor and sends it out to the discharge. Now, move these. This, I guess you would call this a cylinder head. So we remove this. There's a head gasket on here. This is the valve body, I'm assuming. Okay. This is a chain, these are chambers here. You can see there's little chambers in there. Now, when this 
piston is on its downstroke. If you, I don't know if you can see in here, you can see the piston going up and down. When it's on a downstroke, this reed valve right here, this reed valve gets pulled down, sucked down, the vapor gets sucked in. On the upstroke, this cylinder head prevents that valve from coming up and then the compressed vapor is forced through these chambers here and then sent out through a port right here. You can see it right there. Goes through there, comes out. There is the chamber. So after the vapor is compressed, it's forced down through this chamber into this additional, I, I would say this is another chamber, and then forced out through that tubing through here and out to the condenser. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Now, the electrical connections on your terminals, you have common wire here. This is the run winding. This is the start winding. You can always remember red wire is the run winding on the right side. If you find a compressor that has the middle pin on the bottom, then it's just reversed and the, and the run winding would be on the left <coughs> looking at it. Here are four springs and here are four pillars and these pillars or posts sit on top of those springs and that's what uh, reduces the vibration so if you're driving around in your van or you're transporting a compressor and you hear something knocking around here when you're driving around it's this unit banging up against that ring you'll hear it sometimes but it prevents it from flipping over sometimes the compressor is turned upside down it's, that's what that part does right there. Okay, now this is the electric motor. And it's attached with four screws. Okay, that is the motor, the electric part of the motor the compressor. Okay, now that's about the extent of the disassembly of this hermetic compressor. There's no sense in taking that apart anymore because it's not going to serve any purpose. Uh, this is the stator that goes in through the electric motor and I don't see any means of removing the stator so I'm assuming it's pressed on and um, maybe one other thing we might want to look at is you can see try to get this underneath the light you can see the piston in there see the piston going up and down it's just like an engine you see you got an eccentric crankshaft there which causes the rod to go transfer the motion to the piston and there's probably rings around that piston um, however that's about it so take a good look at it just remember this is the high pressure side so when the vapor is compressed, it comes out and is forced out here, goes through this tubing here, out 
into the condenser. Okay, so there you have it. These are the components of a hermetic compressor. For more detailed information on how hermetic compressors work and the components involved, you could use or get a copy of this book, Modern Refrigeration and Air Conditioning. I've had this book, or I've been using this book since uh, the mid-70s uh, when I went to school. And there's a whole section in here on hermetic compressors, how they work, how they operate, single pistons, multi-pistons. Some compressors are as big as engines. And it's uh, a very thorough book. So if you're interested in understanding about how hermetic compressors work, I highly recommend getting this book. Okay, that's it for now.